Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Ventura Cigars Psycho 7 Connecticut. So, if you're acquainted with our cigar reviews, you'll know that we use the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix, for all our reviews. You can download a copy, a blank version, in the description below, so you can do your own reviews, and you can see the final PDF of this in our final written review, which is also in the description below. And of course, to ensure standardization across all our reviews, these cigars have been stored for the last three weeks in the Boveda acrylic humidor that you see behind me, using 69% Boveda packs, and I've been monitoring them regularly with a Boveda butler. The Psycho 7 Connecticut was released in 2016 and follows on from the natural that was released in 2013. Like the original one, it is a collaboration between Hanky Kellner of Davidoff Cigars and Patrick Hurt, also known as El Diablo Blanco, who's the general manager of Ventura Cigars. Hanky Kellner uh, blended the cigar. I'm not sure if uh, Davidoff's uh, master blender, Ledio Diaz, was involved in the process. The cigars are manufactured in uh, one of the Davidoff factories. Now, I'm not sure which one it is exactly. It used to be the Occidental uh, factory. Occidental factory supposedly closed down and production was uh, moved and is now used for storage and production moved to OK Cigars, but I've heard also that these are made on the main Davidoff uh, factory floor. It is uh, made with the classic accordion uh, bunching style. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Connecticut. The binder is Ecuadorian San Vicente, uh, San Vicente. And the filler, it, there's not much information on this. It consists of a multicultural country blend, but I've also read that it's uh, primarily Dominican Republic. Starting with the look and feel, this is a very elegant cigar that is reminiscent of, a, uh, of Davidoff's craftsmanship. It has nice, smooth uh, consistency. Uh, it's slightly firm, but uh, otherwise there is a spring in there. Uh, the color, it has a nice caramel latte color. Uh, which is because it's an Ecuadorian Connecticut, uh, an oily sheen. The veins are quite refined, a couple of visible veins, but nothing too uh, off-putting. And the aromas are on the foot. We have a little bit of hay, some praline, as well as milk chocolate. In terms of pre-light, it gives you a nice, slight resistance, which I quite enjoy. It might be a little tight for some people, but for me, this is ideal. Uh, the flavors uh, that it reveals are quite rich in the dry drawer, which consists of haylage. So like the hay in the look and feel, this is a little bit more cured, cocoa, and a touch of suede leather. Jumping into the first third, this cigar opens up with uh, a note of hazelnut, some creamy mascarpone, and a little bit of terracotta. So terre cuite, cured earth, has kind of dry mustiness to it. Meanwhile, the second third reveals aromatic bay leaf that has been slightly charred and gives a roasted note, uh, walnut and red peppers, particularly in the retrohale. Eventually, once you get to the third, final third, you'll probably experience butterscotch, which is reminiscent of the uh, mascarpone in the first third, but is a little bit boozier, as well as some birch wood, so a nice balsamic and kind of cured uh, woodiness, as well as espresso coffee. It's quite interesting as this cigar is relatively reminiscent of a classic Davidoff cigar. Uh, probably the closest one that I can think of would be the Anodisario blend. Nevertheless, it is still slightly different and it reveals, I would say, slightly stronger flavors, being a mild cigar overall. In terms of complexity, it has a nice evolution to it. The mouthfeel is smooth and velvety. There's a balanced uh, palate stimulation and dryness as it focuses on all different parts of the tongue. The life cycle is quite developed. We have a nice evolution between the three thirds that remains consistent throughout. So no real surprises there, but certainly a, an element of intrigue. And the finish is quite lingering, but not overbearing on the palate with a pleasant residual scent that is left in the room. Of course, next we progress onto the burn, and as you can see, I have a wonderful little ash stack here. So the backbone is quite impressive. We're going to just gently break this off to see what the burn is like. I've been smoking this a little bit slowly, so as you can see, it's a touch flat, 
but we do have a slight mound here, so it does show that the burn is as it should be. In terms of the, uh, the angle, it's got a relatively straight burn. I haven't touched this up whatsoever, so it burns very well. The temperature of the smoke is quite cool, and the draw remains consistent throughout. It has opened up ever so slightly, so those who are con concerned about the hard draw that I mentioned earlier should be relieved to know that. The last consideration that we score on the Bespoke Unit uh, cigar formula is the overall experience which looks at the presentation and how the cigar can be enjoyed. First of all, let's, take, let's talk about the band. Here we have a black Psycho band which is reminiscent of the original one as well as the Maduro. As you may have noticed, Psycho have these uh, really cool prescription style um, bands that would appear on a, uh, on a medicine bottle. Uh, which gives you some information about the uh, the blend, as well as a signature of El Diablo Blanco, who is, as you know, Patrick Hurd that I mentioned earlier. I quite like this uh, band. I think it's an interesting detail. Of course, you have to remove it when you smoke. And what's great is that there is a main band that's hiding underneath, so you don't end up smoking a blank cigar, which some people like to remove the band straight away, but I quite like a little bit of uh, ornamentation on my cigar when I enjoy it. As for the box, you can see a picture of the box in our natural review and not the Connecticut review. This was actually sent to me by Roy Summer of Davidoff UK. So thanks very much for sending these over so I can review them. Um, so the box is very similar. It's a slightly different color. I think it's black rather than white like the, uh, the natural one. Maybe it's blue but uh, it's an intriguing presentation. In terms of value for money, these retail at $8 for a single, which is excellent value given that they're produced by Davidoff using some of their tobaccos. And that's kind of impressive because you don't normally, a Davidoff cigar is normally around 20 bucks, an Avo around 15 minimum. So here you're getting excellent value and great bang for your buck. And finally, the occasion. Where would I smoke the cigar? Well, I'm not likely to go to a formal occasion with uh, a cigar with a big wrapper like this that says Psycho on it. I would reserve this for enjoying it with friends or time alone. Maybe if you go out partying, it would be a good option, but refrain from taking it to perhaps a wedding. Although it would be quite funny, so it depends really on the circumstances. Finally, we'll finish with pairings of the cigar. So this is a food and drink that you could enjoy with it. It is not scored, it's just a consideration that we have at the bottom right hand corner of our uh, uh, cigar formula. First of all, in terms of food, as this being a mild cigar, I would consider milk chocolate, milk especially given that this cigar has a certain creamy element to it. Salt and nuts would be a great, uh, great experience as well, given that there is a nuttiness, especially the walnut in the second and third. Perhaps salted peanuts would have that creaminess that you would really uh, have to enjoy a pleasant accord. And finally, I think French pastries would be a good option here. A flaky pastry with some uh, cream, for example, an eclair or maybe an oronais, which has an apricot in the middle. These are great options too. With regards to beverages, for if you're somebody who enjoys single malt scotch whiskey, I'd probably go for a light bodied and floral lowlands uh, expression, which would be much um, much more refreshing and would pair well with the cigar. Otherwise, you could consider a mild aged rum, nothing too heavy that would be overpowering against the cigar. And finally, a latte coffee, specifically latte rather than espresso, given that this does have a, a significantly creamy texture. That's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll be following up with a comparative review of uh, three of the different Psycho blends, which are the Nicaragua, the Connecticut, and the Natural, which have all been reviewed independently as well. You can see that on the YouTube channel, so switch on notifications so you'll get those. Or head to bespokeunit.com where you can see more of our uh, cigar and lifestyle content, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.